If you've ever tried to demonstrate a task to somebody, or maybe you've tried to convey an idea using some props, you've probably had somebody come back to you saying, do you know, I, I just can't see what you're trying to show me, or I can't see what you're trying to point out. Well, if you take that, times it by 30, and you will know the frustration of any teacher that's tried to do any sort of demonstration probably daily inside of a classroom. Let me give you an example of how this works. I might say I want to show you how to check the voltage of this battery. I need to get my multimeter and turn it on, show the right scale. I need to hold the battery and I need to try and touch the battery probe together uh, onto the battery. The, and well, you can see I, I actually need two more pairs of hands. Now, you might think in a class, I've got lots of pairs of hands and I could just get them to do it. The problem is nobody else can see what you're trying to demonstrate. So wouldn't it be great if we could put it up onto the whiteboard with a projector so that everybody can see what you're doing? Well, the good news is it's not that hard to do it. See, have a look at that. How much easier is that? And if you can imagine that being online as well with a full screen, then you can now see the dial, you can see the on-off button, you can see the battery, and you can see that I'm going to use these probes without touching the metal parts, and how much quicker was that for me to demonstrate that? If you ask anybody, where can I get something that does this, they're gonna tell you that you need to get an Elmo. And of course they don't mean that furry muppet. What they're talking about is the document camera that is made by Elmo. Here they are, and as you can imagine, really good document cameras uh, made by a really good brand are really expensive. Uh, if I was to pop up over onto Amazon, uh, you'd find out that they start from $200, which isn't too bad, but they go up into the thousands for the really good ones. And a lot of us haven't got that sort of money if you're teaching at home online, or even if you said to your, to your teacher, uh, to your boss, hey look, can we get some of these cameras? You might get one, but you're certainly not gonna get lots. So I've got a really cheap option for you by using a webcam. Now, what you want to do is to go off and find yourself a webcam, preferably one that's got a quarter inch thread in the bottom so that you can screw it onto a stand and one that comes with software that you can actually adjust the autofocus or turn the autofocus off and on. This is a Logitech C920. A lot of the Logitechs are like this. So if you've got a Logitech kicking around, try that. What I'm gonna say though is don't go out and buy a, a webcam specifically just to do this because you might find out it's cheaper to buy a document camera instead. Okay, let's have a look to see how we do this. We're gonna go over to the Amazon website now and uh, we're gonna have a look at desktop webcam stand. And uh, as you can see, you've got all sorts of different shapes and sizes coming up. I like these two here at the top, one that bolts onto your desk and this one that's actually got a, 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 like a concrete base to it. And I, I like this one because you can actually move it around and uh, you can see it's got this really fabulous looking ball on the bottom so you can actually get some fine adjustments into it. And you can also uh, attach onto different types of cameras. It comes with a phone clamp so you could use your phone if you wanted to. And it also comes with this clamp here which as far as I can figure out is for attaching hamsters onto or whatever else that you might want to attach on there. So you can see this stand is gonna set you back about $30. That means you've now got a stand that you can actually attach your webcam to, and it's gonna look a little bit like this. It's gonna have an adjustable head at the top. It's got a lock, so you can actually tighten it off into place. You've got another lock here, so if you put a heavy camera onto it, it actually stops it from moving up and down. You can see, the suspension part of it moves up and down quite nicely. It's got a nice bit of adjustment to it. And also you've got that nice heavy concrete stand which stops it from falling over if it gets knocked. So, screw your webcam on top, plug the webcam into your, into your computer and you're almost ready to go. One more thing that you're going to need is a bit of software to run this. Now you could go and use the camera function on the on the PC. Now that will get you up and going right, right here, right now, but it's not very good and it's not very functional. So well, let, me, let me show you a piece of software that I would recommend. So I would use a company called IPVO. I 
pevo. I pevo? A pivo? I, I'm, I'm going to try not hurt myself on this. Uh, you're going to need to go over to their software. They do make document cams, but I'll come back to that in a, in a moment. Uh, go to their software and download this here. I pivo, I pevo, a pivo. No, I'm not going to do that again. Uh, uh, visualizer. Download that and you will have a really good document camera software to be able to use with your webcam. The next thing that we need to do is to download the software for the webcam. For Logitech, it's called the G Hub. And what we're going to then find on it is this autofocus. So we can turn the autofocus off and uh, then, we can, uh, to, then we can focus it manually and that'll stop the camera from hunting when we're trying to show documents. And in particular, when we're trying to show uh, words on a page. This software also has up here under video, uh, it has some controls for the brightness, contrast, sharpness, white balance and saturation for this camera as well. So we've got some adjustment on what the, the actual picture is going to look like. We also have that same adjustment for the software of the document camera too. So after you've downloaded the software for the document camera, the visualizer, then what you're going to do is to open it up and it's going to look a little bit like this. At the moment, we need to select the camera that's going to display on here. If you've got multiple cameras, you're going to see multiple cameras come up. I'm going to do the drop down. There's my Logitech C920. I'm going to select that and you can see now that I've got this, the picture is upside down. Now I can fix that straight away by changing the horizontal and the vertical. There you go, it's the right way up. I'm going to make this nice and big so that, there you go, I wanna maximize the, the, the space that I'm using on the screen and you can see all of this information that's around the outside. If I just click once, it all disappears. So again, maximizing how much you can see on the screen while removing all of the distractions. If I click it again, it comes back. Now underneath that select camera, you also had all of those details that you can change, the brightness, contrast, saturation, etc. Now I have found that when I have changed these, it's actually come into conflict with the webcam software. So if it gets stuck, go to the webcam software and, and correct it with that. So now that you've got this set up, you can be as creative as you want. You don't have to just use text and pictures and images. You can also use things like um, a whiteboard. You know, sometimes if you're online, it's a lot easier to use a whiteboard than it is to try and do it digitally. You could also perhaps do an unboxing. Uh, you could maybe, you know, show somebody what you've got for your wife from eBay. And I can't believe they've sent me motorbike parts again. I just, I'm gonna have to return them. Or you might be able to demonstrate some new technology or demonstrate how something works to your students without actually having to have everybody crowding around and not being able to see. Let's have a look at this little piece of software. Uh, we won't spend too long on it. I think you, you'll be able to figure it out. You can explore this, but let's just go over some of the basics that you've got on this. Seeing as we're talking about document cameras, uh, we may as well have a look at a document to begin with. Now, this software has got lots of different features that enable you to capture pictures and you know capture PDFs and documents and all sorts of weird and wonderful things, even video which is brilliant. I've got this snapshot button down here at the middle, so I can take a picture of what we're looking at, and then we have this annotate tool. So thankfully what we can do is we can actually have a look at this pen tool. Uh, you can see we can pick lots of different colors, we can change the size of it as well. I'm just gonna leave it on the standard as it is. And uh, you can see here it says, uh, pointing out to the students, figure 1919, a wire stator wired to six diodes and there would be the six diodes there. So you can see how quickly you can point things out to students by using this software. If you wanna get rid of that, you just click onto the rubber. Uh, you can either get rid of some of it, uh, which is gonna take a bit of time, or you can clear it and you can make the rubber bigger as well. So we'll just tell it to clear so we don't have to see that anymore. And you can see that that is a really powerful tool to have. Now, you might want to just look at one part of this without distracting the students too much. And what you wanna look for on here is a tool that is called, um, uh, I think it's mask, 
Uh, yes, there it is, masking. So that yellow band is going to be the bit that is highlighted. So when I click change mask down here, now you can see that it's just highlighting that one small slither. I can make that slither a little bit bigger if I wanted to. So maybe I could just highlight just that picture there. So there you go. I don't want them to be distracted by too much. I can also make that band smaller or, you know, I can just have this highlight. And so I can say, yes, I want to highlight this bit here. Okay, that's a really nice functioning tool. Uh, what you can also do, actually just get off of that one to begin with, I'm going to change that one back to a snapshot. You can also zoom in. So over on the left hand side here, you can click on zoom and you'll see here, you can actually zoom in quite nicely. Now you just grab the page and move the page around or you can see this red box here shows you roughly where you are on the page and you can use that to go around as well. There you go, really nice. And it's still relatively clear, even if it is just a web cam. So let's go back into the normal size and I'll just show you a couple more functions here. So another one that you can actually have a look at here, this, this software can do live broadcasts, slow motion, time lapse, stop motion. It's got quite a lot to it. Text to speak, that's uh, tech to speak, tech to speech. It actually has got a magnifying button on it too. You can see we've got this box that comes up and wherever you move that box, it magnifies what's behind it. And you can even click it again and magnify it even more, which sort of gets quite fuzzy then. Um, but it's not too bad. It, uh, it, it's, a good, it's a good option and it also keeps the page still up and going. So we're gonna get rid of that one as well. Go and go back to my snapshot. So there you go, that's really what the software does. There's, there's a little bit more to it as well. Uh, you do have some video, uh, video filters over here. Uh, the nicest is the red on black. I think that looks awesome. The rest are a bit average. The yellow's okay as well, actually makes it quite bright. Um, but the black and white's a bit nasty. Um, so, you know, use them sparingly, I suppose you can say that. Up at here, we've got some settings. And if you have a look, we've got uh, the settings for the snapshot, recordings, slow motion, the live broadcast, etc., etc. So you can have a look at all of those and have a bit of a play. And as you get more confident with this software, you'll be able to introduce more features to help your students be able to learn. Now, I am gonna put a word of caution to doing this. If you have a webcam that already has a thread um, and all you need to do is to buy the stand, then this is a really cheap option to get a document scanner. However, you can get really cheap document scanners from Amazon or eBay that might do as good or better job of just doing document reading than what a webcam would do. So if you rush out and buy yourself a webcam for $100, $150, and then buy the stand, there's another $30, maybe an extension lead if you're, you know, if you, you're not running a laptop nearby, you might get to $200, and by that point, you're probably gonna wish you've actually bought a document reader in the first place. Now these aren't cheap, the, like the Elmo ones, they can get up into the thousands, you can see that here. But there's one here for $174, and uh, there's that one from the company we were talking about, the IPVO, there's one here, they start from 170 and go upwards. So you can see that you don't want to be spending lots of money in doing this setup. That is unless you wanted a webcam for a second camera, or you know, doing other things other than just document reading. If you really want a document reader, I'd recommend doing that if you're not buying, if, if you're buying a webcam and all the other bits as well. But if you've already got the webcam, this is a really cheap way of doing it. I hope that helps. I hope that you, this gets your creative juices going. And uh, I'd really love to know what you use your webcam for. So pop that down in the comments and let me know how you got on and what sort of things you use this sort of setup for.